welcome to the Stockhausen Show. Now, you guys might notice that there's a lot of changes right now. One, you might be listening to me, but actually you're seeing me. That's right. I have decided to move the podcast to full-on video. So this is the studio. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, it was a long decision to be... Um, a long, hard decision to move straight to video, but I felt that my audience on my videos is a lot stronger than my podcast. So hopefully the people from my podcast will transition over. For those that are in the Stockhausen Facebook group, welcome. Thank you guys for sticking with me while I went through this bit of a process of deciding where to spend my time on content. Because as you know, content can take a lot of time and you want to please everyone, but at the end of the day, you have to work work out what works for you. So hopefully you like the new design. I've been playing around with some uh, different looks and this is the new look, the new show. Um, it's all going to be about inspiration, business and Andy and I are really looking forward to uh, getting out and about. So we're not always going to be in the studio. We are going to be allowed out with our cameras and be able to interview, go to events and things like that. So that should be kind of a, a bit of an exciting journey to be honest and I can't wait to uh, get stuck in. So as with the show, the way that it generally works, um, I jump into personal stuff. So I'm going to talk about myself for the first 10 minutes, which I love. And then we're going to move into our guests. So we're really lucky. We've got a really exciting guest for our first show. She's really excited to be in the studio and be the first one in the studio. So things that I wanted to talk about firstly is... I have been struggling with a fitness challenge. I've been talking about on my, on my podcast and on my Facebook page, if you follow me, on things fitness-wise and how I don't like actually exercising at all. But I work really well when I do a challenge. So if you guys have been following me for a while, when I did the Fight Girls, um, I was really invested in, in that challenge and was... Um, we did start to finish and obviously uh, had a fight at the end, which was exciting. So I think the reason why I haven't jumped into a fitness challenge is because I know that once I start, get stuck in, I have to do it. And so I was talking on Facebook last week about how I'm a bit lazy and I would rather work in my business than actually work on myself, which is kind of not a very good thing to do. <laughs> so my cousin Ange tagged me into a post and Andy's going to put up a video in a few seconds um, on this guy. So she tagged me into this post with this guy called Doug Healy. Now, Doug Healy is a fitness trainer um, from Auckland who has trained thousands of new, everyday New Zealanders to head overseas and do marathons. And Doug's story is, you know, he um, broke his back uh, quite a few years ago and had to really train himself to learn to walk again. And it took him two years and he started mar doing marathons and he is such a cool guy. And I had never heard of him before. So um, I did a little investigating and my cousin Ange needed... Uh, she's going to kill me that I'm mentioning her, but uh, she needed a bit of a challenge too. And I think we both wanted to do something together where we can motivate each other. And with this marathon, we chose to do the Hawaii Marathon, Honolulu, 2019. So in December to do a marathon in... So it's like 42 kilometers. So it's kind of a big challenge. And he has... Um, people going to New York, he does the marathon in New York, and uh, there's one in China on the Great Wall, and it's going to be quite exciting. So they take over a New Zealand team, so it's a group of men and women who go over together, and I have thankfully been chosen for the New Zealand team for Honolulu, as well as my cousin Ange. So we started on Sunday, uh, we both went out and bought new sneakers, which is always a good start to a challenge. And we're now moving through the process of uh, training for this marathon. So that's what I've been up to. So you'll be able to catch up with my updates. At the moment, what I'm doing is I will be um, having to do something every day. So 
it doesn't have to be hard work but it's got to be moving my body every day so I mean yesterday I did five kilometers and after the session in the Stockhausen show I'll be going to the gym to do my next session and then on Tuesdays uh, Angie and I will catch up and we're going to go try Zumba which could be quite <laughs> exciting it could be a good video that's all I can say well that's enough about me now this show um, now I'm really excited about our guest today because uh, as you know I have been doing the whole minimalism, downsizing, going a little bit green over the last few months. And I've really, as you guys have been watching, if you watch the Impact Show with Nat and I, I've been talking about tiny houses and I'm addicted to tiny houses. So I, what happened was I started to research tiny houses and you know I got Bryce Langston on board uh, to come on the show and talk to me about tiny houses and all the different things around tiny houses. And then one, one weekend I was really sick, so I had just got a TV and thought and realized I could YouTube to the TV, which is all very exciting. So I ended up uh, scrolling on YouTube and then, you know, as you do, you start looking at tiny houses and then they suggest another video for you to watch. And this other video came up um, about caravanning. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll watch caravanning. And I stumbled across our next guest. So um, Travelling K, Karen, has her own YouTube channel and she is a New Zealander who talks about caravanning in New Zealand. And she does the most amazing videos. So I, I must have stumbled on, I don't know, video 20 or something or 30. And then I went back and watched from her very beginning, her very first video, all the way through. And I've watched every video she's produced since. And she does a weekly video. And I have become addicted to her vlogs. And what's great about Karen is that she is she's doing it she lives in New Zealand she travels around New Zealand and she's trying to make this into a business and a way of life you know it's very hard in Auckland to have a house and, and I think that's what we're all kind of striving for so I won't tell you too much and I will introduce her hello, <laughs> hello. <and> welcome <laughs> thanks for having me <laughs> oh my god I'm so excited to have you in the studio you have no idea how much of a fan I am and I um I don't watch a lot of people on YouTube there's so if you want to know where the caliber is, it's like you, um, Casey Neistat. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it. Bus Life? No, no. I don't really. Well, I start. A I little? do watch a little <laughs> bit of Bus Life. You know, Andy, I find Andy quite funny. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, no, no. Ah. So I don't subscribe to Bus Life, but if they do come in my feed, I'll, I'll watch. Yeah. But yeah, no, you, you, oh, that's and, great to hear. <laughs> and there are two Americans in New Zealand traveling around, but I can't remember their name. Oh, and I know you've commented on their stuff because I saw that you'd commented. Um, Alyssa, I think one of their Alyssa. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> I follow theirs as well. Yep. So they're in New Zealand at the time at the moment and they're traveling. I around. think they're back in uh, America now. Oh, they've gone back, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I'm a week, two weeks behind. Oh, uh, so yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so isn't it interesting how you, be first, how you can become so um, loyal to people, like the fact that I watch every single video. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's yeah. great to hear. I know. Oh, and Bryce Langston, let's not forget. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, living big in a tiny house. I watch all his as oh, well. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so I really wanted to get you on because, you know, I have been real real passionate about living in a tiny house mm. and then of course it's learning about how you do it as a car in a caravan so tell me a little bit about your backstory how did it all come about well I'd been traveling um, and I was just tired of living out of a suitcase so that's when I decided I was going to buy my own home so I came back to New Zealand and started saving for six months and then realized I just wasn't going to get a house in Auckland. It just wasn't going to happen. Yeah. And I didn't want to go um, flatting on my own because it just seemed a ridiculous way to spend all my money um, just on rent. So I started thinking of alternative ideas. And um, one of Bryce's videos, there was a pop-up caravan in, in the back of uh, someone's section and she was living in that and that kind of got me thinking maybe a caravan could be the way to go and after looking at prices and researching a little bit more I just decided a caravan was was the my solution yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's really cool because you have that you can travel mm. as well so that's yeah I find that fascinating that you can just pick <laughs> up and go which I really love well that's what I think 
it's kind of similar to a tiny house, but you yeah. can easily connect it to a car and move. So you don't yeah. have to worry about where you're going to keep your home. Yeah. <laughs> you can just move around. Well, that is one of the downfalls for tiny houses. Is that, yeah. You know, like that's why I love the tiny house, but they're so mm. heavy and it's yes. just so, it's not very cost effective to move them around. Exactly. It's yeah. not as easy. Yeah. So... So you went and bought a caravan. I mean, <laughs> yeah. what, first off, what did people think? Like, what did they... Oh, my dad was against the idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, that's not going to be parked in my section. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, I think once he's, he's been inside it, he's kind of agreed that it's actually, it's, it's better than he expected. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, people do have these connotations where almost if you're living in a caravan, you're... Um, not well and yeah you're not yeah, doing well yeah. in life they're not doing very well in life <laughs> yeah. you know but it's actually a new way of living and yeah so exactly many people are doing it yeah especially um it's very popular with the retirees um particularly in new zealand to get a motorhome and, and just yeah. travel around new zealand yeah non-stop well, that, that's the way you do it right you mm. work all your life have yes. your house yeah and then you go smaller and get a caravan so you can do weekend trips yeah yeah and I mean, why do we have to wait that long? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with the internet now, you, in theory, you should be able to work anywhere. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's so funny because um, my parents have a lily putt, so <laughs> a lily put, and it's so it's a small retro caravan. They're very attractive. Yeah, they're really cool. And my <laughs> yeah. parents, theirs is pink and white yeah. with flamingos. And nice. But even my mum, when I said, oh, I actually think, because I was talking about tiny houses and they're against that idea, <laughs> and then I was like, I've just found this awesome little check I think I might go caravanning and they were like oh no you'd never survive (laughs) really yeah (laughs) yeah and I'm like oh okay you know (laughs) my mum's dead against it so um okay so what are some of the downfalls living this sort of way well I suppose I've started really thinking about my water use and my power use um you become very aware that all water you use you'll need to fill up the tank yourself and get rid of the wastewater afterwards yeah so you start you know you just you don't leave the tap running you're very cautious of what water you use and then with power um, I have a solar panel so again I just need to be keep an eye on the um, computer to make sure that I'm not using too much power and damaging my batteries (laughs) so it's I suppose it's more being awareness conscious of those things, yes yeah. which is not a bad thing no, I don't think so bad. <laughs> and power is such a um we take it for granted you know mm. like yeah. I definitely learned that when from living in suburbia and then moving out to I moved to a property where it had solar and then suddenly it was like oh <laughs> this you know you learn how much each thing takes yes. and yeah you know toasters are terribly exactly bad. I've had to put my toaster away love my toast <laughs> yeah so you have to compromise yeah. don't you yep no hair dryers no oh oh well, that could be an issue <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so so this is a really a new way of living a lot more millennials are mm. like living in their van like getting vans van yes. life is very popular that is very popular and you yep. thought about doing van life for a while is that right a or little that, I, yeah. I researched into it but um i decided it, it wouldn't have felt like a home whereas yes. a caravan it does feel like a small apartment and yeah. i could leave it somewhere and look like a normal person and drive to work with just my car. Yes, that's <laughs> so, a good point. Yeah. yeah, and be able to fit anywhere. I as always well. feel like caravans, there's a lot more acceptance around caravans than van. You know, like if you're living in a van, people are like, you're living in your van? Yeah. yeah. And I suppose people um, in caravans and motorhomes call people living in vans sliders because of the sliding door oh really i never yeah. knew that <laughs> and uh, especially the sound of that door oh, yeah there's a um, yeah a few grumpy people online saying that you know they couldn't get to sleep the sound of the sliding door all night oh. as people got in and out <laughs> well that i mean that's definitely you know do you have issues around that because it's it's not really sound is it it's not soundproof is it um well it's a uk caravan so yep. it's 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 got double glazed windows, so um, so there is a little bit of soundproofing just for temperature. Yeah. So you can handle the cold a little bit better. Um, but yeah, sound <laughs> sound yeah. does carry. Yeah. But the, you can the hear plus sound outside. Yeah. 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 But the the advantage is, if you have a really noisy neighbour, you can move. You're not stuck there. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's yeah. true. Yep. So, uh, 
We're in winter, so mm. how are you coping in winter? Because <laughs> I would imagine, you know, it's well, cold. Again, yeah, UK caravan, it's kind of designed for the colder climates. Yep. Uh, so it's got the double glazed window, it's got a bit of insulation, it's got a pretty good heater really that runs on power if I'm plugged in or yep. on gas if I'm off grid. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I've got a hot water bottle. Yeah. Well, they must heat up pretty quick because it's such a small space. It is a small space. So even if I'm making myself a cup of tea, that kind of heats up the whole space. So. Yeah. so just like talking about your the vlogging and that side of mm. the business, well, you know, did you think you were going to do that? Because I know, was the first video that you had made, I know I saw the video of you buying the caravan. Okay. Was that how it all began? The very first video was me just sitting in front of the camera talking about what I plan to do. Yeah. And I was terrified. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know why I decided to try try it. And uh, it took ages to edit as well. It was very slow. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I got such a good response from people online that it kind of motivated me to it's try it again and just kind of persevere in that direction. And it's just growing. So... I've just yeah, kept doing I, it. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely. You guys, um, I want you to go check out Travelling K. Um, K, not K-A-Y, it's just K. Uh, check her out on YouTube. Her videos are really good, and she tells them really good stories. So each um, upload that she, each upload that she uploads, <laughs> each one that she uploads, it's really interesting, and I, I just love them. I just find it's nice. fascinating. And they could be about the most mundane things, like the fact that, you know, not long ago she had to fix her um, toilet cassette. And I had to giggle at the end because I thought to myself, I just watched a whole video about toilet cassettes. <laughs> and But it was fascinating just the way that you had told the story. And I know, I think it's very natural for the way that you tell it nice. as well. It's not pushed or, yeah. and it's fascinating. Oh, it was fascinating. <laughs> I love it. Well, I suppose when I first started, I just, I didn't know anything and I yeah. didn't know where to get information. Uh, so I kind of wanted to teach people yeah. considering this lifestyle, just the basic stuff that I couldn't find, like like the toilet cassette that no one was really talking about yeah. and what can go wrong. Um, so I suppose I, I do want to kind of pass on the tips that I learn along the way and just help you, people who want to carry do. on. Like, and you've got a big following now in the UK, Getting is that there. right? Oh, yeah, 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 apparently I've got a few good fans over yeah, there. <laughs> that's amazing. How you've built, so you've decided that this is a new way of life Mm. And now you've got this like community around you who support you. And <laughs> what I love about it is you put out a video and then you see the comments um, giving you advice. Yeah. Or maybe you should try this or do yes. this. Or d Is that, that helpful? It is. Uh, I, st I suppose at the start, it kind of, I felt like I needed to know everything. Yeah. I felt like I already needed to be an expert. But yeah. gradually I realized that that takes years, you know, yeah. it's okay to admit that I really don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I post on my videos what I'm struggling with and people who have that experience end up commenting underneath and passing on their experience. I love that because you're so authentic that, you know, I think it was just in your last one where you were uh, fixing the battery and change, mm. the, it's scary that I know so much about you, <laughs> um, that you were fixing the battery and you were just like, oh, I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm just winging it. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, I had to gig giggle and I was like, oh, I wonder what everyone's going to comment below. <laughs> yeah, and they were yeah. like, oh, you know, you're doing great. And, you know, yeah, so that was a supportive video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that was really good. So one of the questions um, a lot of people would ask, you know, mm. you are a solo female tra female traveller. Yeah. And, you know, that was one of my concerns. I had two things when I watched your videos. I think they were the two questions I asked you in message. One, do you get lonely? And two, how is it being a female traveller? So, funnily enough, that's my <laughs> video that I've just edited is oh. answers those exact two questions. Oh, good. Yeah, because <laughs> that is what, you know, I would think you'd get lonely. Like, I'm a very, mm. that's one of the things I would worry about, whether I'd get lonely. Well, I've realised that I'm as lonely as I was flatting. So, you know, you, st you yeah. still have those moments of loneliness when you're, yeah. not, you're not surrounded by family or close friends in a flat. You're, a lot of the time you are surrounded by, st you know, you're strangers yeah. with each other. Yeah. So you're kind of doing your own thing. So in the caravan, it's kind of the same, <laughs> exactly kind. the same. It's just those, I find those moments 
after eating and going to bed, those are the moments sometimes that yeah. I might miss some company. Yeah. But I can always ring someone. And if I really do feel lonely, I can always just hook up the caravan and drive and see my family and just spend That's true. intense family time with them. So, That's true. so you don't really feel that? I don't feel lonely, no. And I, love, I love being out in nature and going hiking and seeing new things. Yeah. And in some campgrounds, there is a, the sense of community. So I've ended up making some really good friends who are living this lifestyle as well. So there are uh, more people doing it as well? It's kind of the older yep. generation, but, you know, they've got some yeah. awesome stories. Well, obviously, Travelling K needs some friends, so we better, <laughs> who, who's up for a caravan party? Let's go yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> travelling by yourself, how mm. has that been? Have you been scared or...? Uh, well, I've done quite a bit of travelling overseas on my own, so yeah. I kind of feel quite f- comfortable travelling on my own. The only... Moments have been when I've decided to go freedom camping and I've been a little unsure if I'd get hassled at night, maybe because you hear the odd story of local teenagers just um, doing wheelies oh, yeah. <laughs> on, uh, yeah, because it's it's land that anyone can come into. Yeah. So I think that's kind of, those have been the moments when I've decided to go freedom camping and I've been just a little unsure if I'd be hassled. But oh, it's, yeah. been fine. it's been fine. <laughs> so far, it's been fine. So, one of the other questions. <laughs> I'm always like, so one of the other questions. <laughs> one of the other questions is cost. Now that mm. you've been doing it just over a year, how is it? It's been a year, right? Nearly two years. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! Because <laughs> I saw you look like mm. <laughs> <laughs> nearly two years. Getting my closer apologies, to two years. My <laughs> apologies. <laughs> nearly two years. How does it relative? Like, if if I was so let's do it in comparison as mm. if you were going flatting yeah. or living by yourself because relatively you're living by yourself. So if you've got a flat on your own, yeah. how does it compare? I think it's a lot cheaper than if you're living on your own. Yeah. Um, but I came from a flat where there were three other people. Yeah. And I, it is less, but it is, it's more than I originally um, worked out to be. So I've actually got another video on oh, costs. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, it works out to be around 1500 a month. And yeah. that's for my bills, that's for food, that's for gas, that's for staying at campgrounds, that's everything. Yeah. So, yeah, in comparison to if mm. you were flatting. But, I mean, you wanted to do this so you could yes. live on your own. So, I think... To have that... Yeah. To have my own space. Yeah. So, instead of spending all my money on rent, yeah. it is a lot cheaper. A lot cheaper. <laughs> so, live if you in put the it in comparison of... Yeah. Um, renting that yep. would probably be two thousand a month just yeah. in rent in yeah. Auckland. I might <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that is a yeah. savings. Where it was more, I was paying twelve dollars a night. Yeah, at the um, apple orchard. Yes, <laughs> the apple orchard. So you you're not travelling around all the time. You I have kind of do got patches. You yeah. have patches. So I, tell me how that works. I ended up. Um, well, it all comes down to money. So. Yeah. At the start, I did like three months of intense travel, just kind of get, getting used to caravanning. Yep. And then I ran out of money and came back to Auckland. Yep. So I kind of stayed put for a while. And then I got offered um, a contract job in Hawke's Bay. So I ended up moving the caravan there and stayed on an apple orchard. And the contract was for round about two thirds of the time working in our office and a third of the time I could work online so I could kind of travel around the area. Oh, cool. So, <laughs> so I mean, that's the perfect job, right? Yeah. You can do online. Yeah. And you are a graphic designer, is that right? That's right. So yeah. that's how you make your living? That's how I make my money. <laughs> that's good. I mean, I mean, the thing is nowadays, you know, mm. we've got online. Oh, no. Next, internet. How yeah. do you do, what, what's the internet story? Because, you know, some of us can't live without internet. Yeah, I can't live without oh, internet. So what, do you, so what do you do for that? Um, I use a company called Wireless Nation, and you get a modem that is exactly like the modem you'd get at home. Yeah. And that goes to the towers for your phone, and, which is, and uh, yeah, you get internet. So I can oh. stream Netflix, I can upload my videos onto YouTube and I have no problem. Oh, yeah. that's fantastic. <laughs> oh, you're breaking down all these walls <laughs> to go, because that would be one of my, um, oh yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. It, when I when I first started, I um, was trying to figure out how to get internet. I ended up getting the 
biggest plan I could on my phone. I think I went through the data in like one week. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. was for one whole month. Yeah, so, that's crazy. Yeah, it took a little while to figure, figure out, out the best so option. So what was that company called again? Wireless Nation. Wireless Nation. I have to write that down. <laughs> yeah. One of the other things I really want to talk about mm. is so you are building this business online like how are you making money are you um what are the ways you're making money because i know yeah we all strive there's a whole big um drive to um live a more lifestyle business and this yes. is definitely part of that yep. so how are you what sort of things are you doing to make money online well i think most money i make is through being a graphic designer yep and I'd say in the last three months, there's been a bit of a shift. Um, and that's mainly through Patreon. I've started getting people like you. Mm. <laughs> What's Patreon? Uh, what is Patreon? Yeah. Um, that's something that someone could contribute a dollar or up to, and on mine, up to $30 a month towards, a lot of time it's towards a YouTuber who is struggling to um, put out the videos. Because yeah. it, it actually takes, <laughs> takes me about three days um, to put to make a video to film it and to edit it and yeah. put it online so p patreon kind of just helps a creative person um to grow and to keep producing yeah so i s i'd say in the last three months there has been a little shift and i have been starting to get some help from people <laughs> yeah. um through youtube i'm not getting much i'm about to get my first paycheck mm. you can only get money if you've made $130 and I'm about to hit that the for the one. very first <laughs> oh, one <gosh. laughs> so it's and a slow process think, it is a slow process yeah. like, to build up your community and yeah and th that's the thing I love about Patreon it's not about the struggling YouTuber mm. <clears throat> it's about supporting someone that you enjoy investing your time in yeah. watching their videos yeah um and that's why I mean I love your videos you're the only one I Patreon for <laughs> thank you <laughs> but I just think oh if I could just donate a little bit you know yeah you've got an, it really enough, does help it does help yeah, yeah. it does that's good that's yeah. great <laughs> and I love your Patreon as well because you do these little um you know monthly live videos and you yeah know, you feel real connected with you yeah I try to make it worth people's while as well mm. just to give back in some way yeah, yeah. I okay, think it's great. That's <laughs> great. So one of the other things we were going to discuss is how how does someone choose to do this lifestyle? I mean, mm. how do you if you were gonna give advice to anyone to think about this way, what sort of things I mean would you th say caravanning or would you say, you know, if you looked back, mm. would you still do caravanning or would you do a tiny house? I'd personally do caravanning, I think. Yep. Um I just like that I can move around because I still don't know where I want to live originally. All I know is I don't want to live in Auckland, yeah. <laughs> so I, yeah. but I still don't know where. So a caravan suits me that I can move around and I do like the fact that I can leave it somewhere yeah. and just drive my car into a national park or down a gravel road and not have to worry so much. Yeah. Um, and it's more affordable than a motorhome as well. I found yeah. anything with an engine started to get very expensive, yeah, very expensive. Right. So, but at the same time, if someone is just wanting to travel nonstop, I would suggest maybe um, a camper or a smaller motorhome. Like there's a f um, freedom camping spot just across the road, but the, the car parks are so small, you would only be able to fit a very small caravan or motorhome. And that, so that's a free spot. I couldn't park there. There's oh, just no yeah. room for a caravan. No. <laughs> so I, I guess it depends what you're after. Yeah. Yeah. And what about when you're traveling around, how mm. do you find, how do you find places to go? Like how? I use apps. Yep. Um, there's a free one for called CamperMate. Yeah. And if you join NZMCA, which if you decide to do this lifestyle, I highly recommend it because there's a lot of perks. NZMCA have their own app too. And that shows you all the paying campgrounds. All They've got their own campgrounds. It's $3 a night and they're scattered throughout New Zealand. It's yeah. basically just a paddock. So you yeah. want to be, you have to be self-contained to yeah. be there. Um, then there's also people who like this lifestyle and want and offer their land. So you can stay on theirs, sometimes for free, sometimes for a donation. And yeah, cool. there's, so there's a lot of options. options. There yeah. are a lot of options. So 
You've been traveling around New Zealand. Yeah. Like you've been doing it for what? Two years now. Nearly two years. Nearly two <laughs> nearly, years. Nearly. Two years, people. <laughs> two years. <laughs> So what, what are the places? Where do you love to stay? I mean, you've been around everywhere. So <laughs> I, I really like the apple orchard. It was just so apple. novel. Oh. So interesting to see how an apple orchard works. And yeah. see, I arrived when the blossoms were on the tree and oh. I left when we could pick stuff so will off you be the going, tree. So will you be going back there? <laughs> I honestly don't know. Oh, you don't I know? I don't know at the moment. So yeah. I don't know what you're doing. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So we talked about all the good things. What mm. are some of the things you've been struggling with with your caravan? Now, there have been many because I've watched all your videos. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, let's talk about some of the things that you didn't – because what I love about you is that mm. – you just get down and you're <laughs> fixing things with the screws and you're like, oh, this broke, so I'm just going to go <laughs> fix it. And I'm just like, she's just fixing it. Uh, I need a man to come do my light bulbs. Oh, do you no. know what I mean? <laughs> uh, there's an issue. It's not just, I put a light bulb in and they're flickering. And I was like, oh, get a new light bulb. Got a new light bulb. It flickered as well. So I think there's something wrong. Yeah, that just sounds like there's something yeah, so wrong, definitely. It's not like I can't. But yeah. It's taken me Maybe a year. an electrician it's rather than a, a man. It's so bad. It's taken a year to get uh, it, to yeah. put a light bulb in. <laughs> no. I was like, oh, we don't need those lights. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who needs this? <laughs> the mood lighting. Yeah, but you're really hands-on with screwing things in and fixing. So it's been yeah. a big learning curve. Right? I have learned. I had no tools at the start, so I've, oh. I've been slowly buying more and more tools. Next one, I have to get a power, a power um, a drill. A drill? Yes, oh, yes. I think that's kind of needed. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh. So, so uh, yeah, I've had um, two flat tires, one on each side. Mm -hmm. uh, one was just, I think I drove over a branch and <laughs> I happened to be in a campground at the time. So it, did, it took me about three days to change it because I couldn't get the spare wheel out. And then when I took the wheel into the tire place, they didn't have that exact wheel. So oh, you yeah. had to order one in. And so, yeah, I um, had the caravan on just one wheel for a few days. Oh, my gosh. And then the last one, um, I was just driving along. State Highway 1 and, and the the tire just went completely and I pulled over and it completely destroyed the outer cover oh. and it had knocked a couple of holes underneath the caravan too. So that one, that took a while to, to, to find, out. yeah, to find the replacement and fill in the holes. And <laughs> oh my gosh. And <laughs> what about the shower? The shower. <laughs> Can we just like talk about the shower? Yeah, I actually just yesterday bought a new shower head just to test oh. it because I'm wondering if it's the shower, if too much water is coming out. But overall, yeah. <laughs> I've got, um, it's, if I was getting a caravan again, I would get a separate shower. Because at the moment, it's a combination shower toilet. Yeah. So every time I have a shower, I just have to sponge down the base um, yeah. to get rid of all the water, which is a bit annoying. Um, and I'm trying to get it so that I can start using the shower more and stay at these more out of the way campgrounds. And it's just, it's not right. <laughs> it's no. it's the, like the quickest shower in the world at the moment before the water goes yeah. cold. So I'm trying to figure out what is wrong. And I actually, the video where I mentioned that, I do have a lot of comments um, with suggestions. So the shower head was one idea. Yeah. And That's I've got a few other. Fix. That is we'll, the cheapest. We'll yeah, I'm going to do the cheapest first, first yeah. and then slowly progress and try to figure out what's going on. I know. Um, <laughs> one of the videos, well, it was a shower video and <laughs> and... And the water was coming up out of the th out of the hole, and she was like, "Oh, that doesn't look too bad." And I was like, "Gagging! What do you mean that doesn't look too bad? It's terrible." <laughs> yeah. So yeah. next time you get a shower separately, and can oh, you definitely get a shower. Can you just get that whole thing replaced, or is there's no room? There is just there's no, no room. room. Yeah, yeah, I've got the certain layout. Yeah, the caravan's just designed is for that exact layout. Oh, there's okay. kind of there's no space for so it. So it's too difficult. <laughs> Difficult to change that out. It'd be too yeah, I, I'd probably better to sell the caravan and, and buy a new one if I wanted to go down that track. Uh, and yeah. just um, someone's asked, how big is your caravan? Like it's uh, six and a half meters. Yep. And I find that's actually quite a good size. When I ring up a campground to stay, yeah, they always kind of um and ah and question, and then they're like, oh yeah, that that'll fit the normal size. So I think if you go any bigger, then you start to get into issues of um, oh, having size. space oh, at campgrounds. Yeah. So how many? How is that? Sixteen foot? Six and a half meters? Uh, is that? I don't know. Uh, I don't know what foot? foot. I don't know. Either. Might have been twenty-one. Seems to ring a bell. Oh, but I'm not sure. Not don't hold you. Oh, don't, I don't tell know. me to I don't it. Know. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so for those who are watching, I hope you guys have got lots of information from 
Karen and definitely go check out Traveling K. Her videos are very interesting. And if you're thinking about this type of um, living, I, which I certainly am, like I'm sort of humming and hurrying about whether I'll do a tiny house or maybe, well, Karen keeps telling me I should do a caravan. So it could be in the cards, um, but I probably, like, do you advise people to go try it out for like long weekends or? Yes, definitely, yeah. yeah. And if you're th trying to work in an area, stay at a cabin at the campground and just drive to work the next day just to see if it's okay, if you can handle if that. If you can handle that. Yeah. Because yeah. Well, you, I know we were going to end, but hang on. <laughs> You've had to min <laughs> um, minimalize a lot as well. Yes, like, yeah. How's that been? Not it's having... actually been fine. Because yeah. I suppose before I started this adventure, I was traveling a lot, so I'm used to living out of a suitcase. Yeah. Uh, some people, if you have, if you love your shoes or a whole lot of clothes, it might be a bit of a struggle. <laughs> you can have a couple of boxes under the bed, yeah. or you know, I've got a few spare shoes in my car. Oh yeah, <laughs> so yeah it's extra storage. In yeah, the car. exactly. Yeah, a big car so exactly. You can <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know someone who has a, a van and he has a laundry and spare water in his van. So there's ways around it. You can make yeah, it work. You can make it work. Yeah. Oh my God, so exciting. And I can't wait to see um, where you're going to next. It's going to be quite exciting. <laughs> so for those who um, are watching and want to find out more about Kay, go to Traveling Kay. She has a website and she's on YouTube. And I want to thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me here. You're welcome. <laughs> and we will see you guys next week. Life is better when you create stuff. See ya. Thank you.